Hey Grace, this is Pastor Mark with your weekly sermon recap. This last Sunday we were in Genesis chapter 27 and that chapter is about 46 or so verses long so if you haven't heard that message I want to first of all invite you to go to the website and either listen to it online or download it. Uh, but second of all, read through that chapter because it's in this chapter that we have this scenario where Jacob uh, deceives his very father Isaac into giving him the blessing that is due the firstborn. It's, it's that story many, many of us are familiar with where Esau uh, is sent out to hunt some wild game by Isaac saying, hey, I don't know what day I'm going to die. I'm old. I want to give you the blessing. Esau does. But while he's gone, Rebecca, uh, who overhears this conversation, convinces Jacob to dress up like Esau, give his dad the food that he wants, and to deceive him into believing he's Esau and then giving him the firstborn blessing. And he reluctantly does this, but he does do this and convincingly deceives his dad and gets the blessing. Stories like this, uh, who are often wondering, how is God working out his plan when someone like Jacob is, de is deceitful or Rebecca, a trusted wife, is deceiving her husband, yet God has chosen Jacob to the, be the recipient of the covenant relationship that he is wanting to extend uh, from Abraham to Isaac to ultimately Jacob. Well, there are four things when I think about this story that I see as applicational to my life um, and that I derive from this narrative. Number one, God's covenant relationship is not based upon human merit. It never has been. God, when he chose Abraham, he chose him while he was living in a polytheistic home up in northern Mesopotamia. It is just that Abraham, when he heard God speaking to him, believed and acted in faith by moving down to Canaan that God had promised him. He was, he was a man who wanted to honor what God was asking him to do uh, by acting in faith. God makes his covenant relationship with him, not because Abraham is great. We see him doing things later in his life that we think are a little bit questionable, and yet God remains faithful to his covenant he made with Abraham. Isaac uh, in line, and then finally Jacob here. And by extension, all the way to us, through faith in Jesus Christ alone are we saved. You see, none of us merits God's favor. None of us merits by our own efforts, our own good works, God's forgiveness and salvation. And yet God freely gives this covenant relationship to us, not based upon human merit. So when we see stories like Jacob, we should be slow to judge because we don't know what's going on here completely. Only God does. And God is choosing to extend his covenant to, to Jacob for faith that we've yet to see in Jacob. Number two, God always protects his covenant promise. Whenever the covenant has been in jeopardy from the time of Abraham all the way to, to, to Jacob, God has always proven himself faithful to overcome whatever obstacle there was in the path of fulfilling his promises uh, by his own power and glory. In the case of Abraham and Sarah, they were way beyond childbearing age. They had always tried to have children, and it was, it was clear that they were not going to be able to have kids. Yet God promised Abraham and Sarah a son. And when Abraham was 100 years old and, and Sarah was 90, they had Isaac, the son of laughter. God always is able to fulfill his covenant promises. Jacob, in this case, and, and Rebecca, they saw the value of the blessing that Isaac was about to bestow on Esau. And they valued it so much so that they're willing to go to um, unethical measures to obtain it. What if they didn't do that? We already know that God had promised and, and spoke to Rebekah that the older would end up serving the younger, that God had already chosen Jacob, whether he had done good, anything good or bad, either of the brothers. It was going to be God's sovereign choice for them. What if they just chose to trust God? 
in that moment? What extraordinary measures would God have taken to cause that blessing to transfer to Jacob without Jacob having to deceive Isaac and steal the blessing for himself? How many times uh, do we short circuit perhaps what God is trying to accomplish in our life when we're experiencing circumstances that may be difficult or we see there's an obstacle in our path and something that's really good out there, something that God, we think that God really wants us to have, but somehow that's not being, it's not reaching us, that blessing or the fulfillment of a, of a hope or, or whatever it is. And instead of waiting on God, we kind of uh, take a shortcut and we obtain that thing, perhaps missing in the process what God would have brought about by extraordinary means. And sometimes God just wants us to wait, to trust Him to do and to perform His good work on our behalf. Sometimes He wants us to act, but sometimes we want, He wants us to wait. And to really discern what we ought to be doing, we should be doing so on our knees in prayer, seeking God's counsel through His Word to know how best to act or to wait according to His will. Number three, choices always have consequences. Jacob made choices. Rebecca made choices to obtain this blessing, the, the prize. And they got the prize. They, they, they won. They had victory. But that, those choices came with some pretty steep consequences. As a result, Jacob's brother Esau hated him and to, the, to the point where he was conspiring to kill him. And to protect his life, Rebekah sent Jacob away for a few days so that anger, the, Esau's anger could subside. Well, those few days turned into more than 20 years. And according to the, the, the narrative as it continues on in Genesis, what we find is that Jacob and Rebekah never see each other again. And in fact, Jacob doesn't interact in the narrative with his father Isaac again until Isaac's deathbed, all to the end of Genesis. And so it is these moments where you wonder, they may have gotten the prize, but at what expense? Cons choices always have consequences. Let us make sure that if God is calling us to wait, let us wait for His timing. Let us wait for His glory and recognize that we should not short-circuit that process in order to obtain the prize, at a, sometimes at a consequence that we're not really wanting to pay. Number four, and lastly, God's will allows for character development. You see, in this narrative, though Jacob is acting in a way that we probably wouldn't um, approve of, the reality is he hasn't placed his faith in God yet. A telling statement that he makes in the narrative in this chapter is that when Isaac asked how, how he could have uh, obtained this meat and cooked it and brought it to him so quickly, uh, Jacob says, well, it was the Lord your God that made this happen. You see, Jacob had not yet owned his own faith. Oftentimes, God uses experiences in our life that will later develop us, our heart, our life experiences as we are developed into people that God has a plan for and He will use us. The good choices we've made and even the bad choices, God can use for His glory. God is not finished with Jacob yet. And the narrative, as we continue to read, will prove that out. And God isn't finished with you. God isn't finished with me. And even after we place our faith in Jesus, we're still going to make decisions that maybe we're not proud of. But God is faithful to His covenant promise to us. It's not based upon human merit, and, and, and He will bring about His plan in His good time. So let us fix our eyes on Him. And I look forward to the weeks ahead as we look at Jacob's life and how God is going to develop this plan, and we can see how that plan affects you and me.